Back to the morning roast with Vontae and Shasky. Must be the money. Now, if you start wearing Must a leather vest with the taco meat showing, then I know you've gone Must full be Dion. The money. Come on, do the Dion, baby. Do the Dion. Must be the money, Bosa. Did you see one of his kids wearing his cleats this week? Both his kids were. Shador and Shiloh. So sick. And Dion had all three pairs trying to figure out which ones he was going to wear on the sideline. And his walk out of the tunnel with the popper was a roller stone on Instagram. And he's walking out with the stun of shades on. I can't get enough of Dion. I, okay, I'm not saying that you're firing Shanahan because people are going to interpret Must it that way. Be the money. But would you be here for Dion being the Niner head coach? I think he's perfect in college. I don't know about the NFL. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm not going to doubt him because I'm a believer, Dion. I'm not an unbeliever. I'm a believer. And James score underscore 1982. James oh, just the haters Listen, in the no, YouTube No, 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 no. Hold on. See, people think corny is a bad thing. Corny is cool. Girls love corny. Corny is cool. Be secure in who you are. Oh, yeah, but just don't be Russell Wilson. But James C underscore 1982 is so cool. You're so cool. I love that guy, man. He's probably my number one hater. He has no idea. If you don't and have haters, fuels, you ain't popping. And it fuels me. You see this? He checked it all. It's on my veins. Checked it all, baby. Checked it. My girl loves me, and that's all that matters. James. Best athlete to put out a, a, a song. <sighs> I think Roy Jones Jr., y'all must have forgot. Dane one of my Lillard's favorite. up there. What? Dane Willard. Okay. Better than Shaq's uh, biological didn't bother. Shaq's probably number one. Shaq's probably number one. Shaq had hitters. Shaq had hitters. He did have hitters. Let's go to Matt Barrels. He's got a lot of hitters on A-Web. Theathletic.com. Wrote about the rib game. Brock Purdy in the rib game. In the hat and t-shirt game up in Seattle a year ago. But right now we're talking Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. As he was at the presser yesterday as the news broke that Bosa signed a five-year, $170 million deal. $122.5 million guaranteed. Wow. It's a lot of money, the highest paid defensive player ever. We're going to try to break down this contract, try to break down what makes sense, the restructuring of George Kittle and Trent Williams contract. Matty B, Matt Barrow's on the roast again. What's up, Matt? Good morning to you. Morning to you guys, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was uh, as big a 180 <laughs> as I, I'd ever seen at a press conference. Uh, Kyle Shanahan is, is preparing to basically dodge questions uh, about Nick Bosa um, during his presser. It's going to be another glum, uh, kind of oddball <laughs> press conference, and then it just changes, and there's like a, a fresh new breeze that comes through the organization, and it was, it, was, uh, it was palpable in there. Yeah, no, I bet it was. I saw the smile from Shanahan, and he's going to play, no doubt about it, as Bosa landed last night at about 9.58 p.m. at the San Jose airport. So what were you expecting when the deal – because – we figured that the deal would get done. We just didn't know when it was going to get done. Did you think it would hit $122.5 million guaranteed, Matt? No. I mean, I thought it would be over. I mean, I thought it should be over Aaron Donald. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was the, the number that everybody was kind of pointing to, that 317 average per year. And it was uh, apparently well over that. We're going to have to wait for all the details on that, but, um, you know, that seemed to be the sticking point. Not only is it over, I, 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 I knew the 49ers would go over that. I mean, just mm -hmm. given their track record, they weren't going to uh, not uh, hit that mark, but uh, it, it seems like the, the, the Boches were entrenched for something, I don't want to say dramatically over it, but uh, significantly over that mark. Well, I found it very interesting. You're there every day. You're talking to these guys all the time. To hear the locker room after all this, like, hey, it's a business, it's a business. It is, but they also want to accomplish the goal of, like, winning the Super Bowl. So, to, like, hear Fred Warner and to hear Trent Williams talk about how this was kind of hanging over the locker room, that hit me. Like, that really hit me. Obviously, they need their, their compadre to, to win it all. Um, it felt like the locker room needed this. For sure. I mean, uh, there had been a, a bit of a, I don't know how to describe it, it's just sort of an oddball feeling, uh, a weight in that locker room the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, they, first of all, they have all this um, expectations, all this responsibility of, of, uh, of having a loaded roster uh, and going to the Super Bowl. 
and not squandering the you know uh, you know the the later years of some guys like Trent Williams, uh, George Kittle's getting up there, Kyle Juszczyk's getting up there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so you, you got that. Then you had all the the Trey Lance stuff. Um, then you had you know the Forty ers uh, drafted a, a kicker in the third round, and all of a sudden that kicker is hurt. Um, and there were there were just a number of things that made for you know tough questions. And like I said, just a um, a bit of a weight that you, you normally don't have going into a season. And um, the Bosa thing just kind of made it all disappear in one fell swoop. It's like, you know, you're struggling with all sorts of things and you get a win on Sunday and everything just feels so much better. That's what... Um, this is like a Wednesday win for the 49ers. No, nah, no doubt about that. Matt Barrels here on the morning roast on 95-7 the game. Now, Trent Williams and George Kittle, they got the back chop. They got the little footnote at the end of the story. They restructured their deals, Matt. What does that mean for the salary cap this season, next season? Because from what I'm hearing, and I know we don't know all the details from the Bosa contract, but could the Niners have freed up $23 million in cap space for this season, Matt? Yeah, they could have, but I'm 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 imagining that Bosa is going to take a big chunk of that. Okay, um, which means that he he won't count as much as he could have for next season, which is where the chickens are really coming home to roost. And again, I mean that's something we're going to have to wait on the structure of this deal to figure that out. But that was that was always the big problem spot. What 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 does the t- 2024 cap look like? Can they fit all of those guys under the cap? Um, and if not, who's going to go? And uh, I don't. I wish I had the answers to that. I don't. Right. I think the 49ers are going to let the season play out, and that some of that will be answered in time. But right. um, yeah, I think this is all sort of uh, prepping for to get uh, 2024 as manageable as possible. They had such a great defense last year, and. You know, to hit on one defensive coordinator is difficult. To hit on two back to back the way that they have, it's like, man, it's really hard. Now to try to hit on a third in Steve Wilkes, there's a lot of pressure on him. You know, they were the number one defense in a variety of categories. They stuffed the run, they got a lot of sacks, they did a good job hitting the quarterback. Um, Any concern over Steve Wilkes manning this defense now? I don't think so because he's not really changing things up very much. Um, you know, I'm not the first person to say this, but the the big difference might be in in how much he blitzes. Been a lot of experimenting with that. Um, you know, Fred Warner coming up uh, from middle linebacker, Tano Hufanga coming off the edge. Uh, Drake Greenlaw would be would be a good blitzer just because he's so fast. And so, I mean, if if that hits home. That's going to be another element. It's going to lead to more sacks. It's going to lead to more turnovers. And I think that's how Steve Wilkes could distinguish himself from his predecessors there. But I also remember, you know, when when D'Amico Ryan's took over, D'Amico Ryan's was going to be the guy that was more aggressive. Right. He was going to blitz more than Solid did. Um, and then he ended up uh, not doing that because, um, you know, in this day and age. Quick passes, so much, uh, um, you know, pass-oriented offenses. He realized that having, you know, all those guys in coverage uh, was was better, and that you know he could hit home with four rushers. So I just wonder whether uh, the the Forty ers practiced it all off season. They could turn to that whenever they want, but I wonder whether. Wilkes will ultimately reach the conclusion that the other guys did that, you know what, uh, the occasional blitz is fine, but I'd rather have Fred Warner, you know, uh, mucking up the uh, the passing lanes right. and possibly getting caught uh, in a blitz and then having a big play. You know, it, it's going to be really fun to watch or interesting to watch on Sunday because I, I think that the Steelers are equipped to make you pay. Um, if you if you don't hit home with that blitz, they like the deep passing game. It's something that that Kenny Pickett and uh, Kenny Pickett's still developing as a quarterback. I'm not saying that he's uh, Aaron Rodgers, but um, he can hit those deep balls. They've got some deep targets there. The 49ers safeties are a little bit banged up. Right. Both of them were limited uh, on Wednesday. So um, yeah, this, this uh, it'll, it'll be. Um, 
a, uh, a a nice litmus test to see whether Wilkes does blitz a lot in Pittsburgh. Matt Barrows here on 95-7 the game, and you brought up Hufunk, and I'm with you there. These receivers, George Pickens, Allen Robinson the third, and, of course, Deontay Johnson, they are some threats, man. They are some – and they have a good tight end as well. Uh, this team is loaded offensively, the Pittsburgh Steelers, that is. And you brought up Hufunk a couple times there. He was battling assist and at his knee. Which knee was it? Was it the left knee? Was it the right knee? And is this something that could linger into the season? Because – then we're going to have to count on the rookie here and Jair Brown to step up for Hufanga if he does get compromised with this knee. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think Brown would have to come in for, for either guys, really. Right. Um, and uh, Gibson hasn't practiced in a couple of weeks because of uh, a back issue. It doesn't seem to be a big deal, but, you know, you hear back and, uh, you know, Gibson is not... Um, Elderly by any stretch of the imagination, I think he's in his early thirties. But <laughs> right. NFL, you're you're a gray hair if right. you've made it that far. So I mean, the, the, they're both concerns. Um, the Forty Nine ers certainly have downplayed the what's called the Baker's cyst. Right. I'm, I'm sure there there's some uh, doctors and, and nurses who are, are listening right now and, and know exactly what that is. I don't. Um, it, it, he seems to be moving around okay, and the Forty ers think that this is something that he can uh, manage and it won't be a big deal. But, uh, yeah, when, when your starting safety crew um, is on the injury report to, to start the season, that's a, that's a bit of a concern. And that's been an issue with the 49ers. Um, they have not started out quickly in, in recent years. Uh, they went 8-0 and in, uh, in 2019, but that's, that's the outlier yeah. under Kyle Shanahan. They, they don't have a winning record over – the first eight games in any other season that he's been here. So that, that'll that be something to watch as well, whether they can shake off some of these early injury issues. George Kittle's a little banged up too. That should be uh, familiar to 49ers fans <laughs> and um, get off to a faster start than they did a year ago. Who's kicking this Sunday? Uh, it's going to be Jake Moody. Now, the question is whether he's doing kickoffs too. Um, if I'm the 49ers and I've got a rookie with a, a quad train, maybe I let uh, Mitch Wisnowski handle that aspect of it. Uh, but uh, Shanahan, now Shanahan was very ebullient after hearing the, uh, the 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 Nick Bosa news, so he was positive on everything, and he said uh, he was uh, he'd be surprised if uh, Nick Moody, uh, or, sorry Jake Moody, didn't uh, kick in this game. So it's looking as if he's going to handle the, the field goals. Are, are there going to be 55-yarders? I don't know. I mean, uh, they might be more conservative with Moody than they would be otherwise. Wow. Uh, and that's not an easy place to kick in Pittsburgh, that stadium there, formerly known as Heinz Field. Uh, George Kittle, he was on an injury report, uh, the adductor strain, but then he played in the final preseason game against the L.A. Chargers, and now he's got a groin injury. I know he was limited yesterday. Is there any worry about him not playing Sunday against Pittsburgh? Well, I think a doctor is just a fancy name for, for groin. Um, the doctor was the name was the word oh, yeah, yeah. using in the offseason to describe some of these injuries, and now that the official injury report is out, it's groin. So it's the same injury. Um, I don't know if it got exacerbated uh, in that Chargers game. Uh, Kittle hasn't spoken to the media uh, in a little while. He might today. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's a, uh, it's a concern. Uh, I remember uh, Drake Greenlaw, I can't remember the season. It was the year that they opened up in, uh, in Detroit. Oh, yeah, 2021. Uh, yeah, 21. He had a, a groin injury early on, and, um, it uh, it never went away, and he had to have surgery, and he ended up missing a, a, a big chunk of that season. So that's one that you have to manage carefully, or else it can get away from you, and uh, you're gonna you would have to have surgery to have it corrected, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a uh, I'd say it's a bit of concern. Uh, I've been watching Kittle on a side field these last few practices. He's been going all out. Uh, he looks ready to return to full speed, but uh, until he does, uh, that remains a uh, a bit of a red flag. Who's tight end two? It's a, it's a fantastic question. Last year, <laughs> tight end two was Tyler Croft. Tyler Croft is now on the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> uh, so tight end two is you know they 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 ideally like somebody who um, can line up as that sixth offensive lineman a lot. Uh, Levine Toilolo did that in 2019. Croft did that last year. 
I don't know if that guy's on the roster. I think that they, they thought that uh, Cameron Latu, the, the third-round pick, could, could be that guy this year. Um, he's done for the season. Uh, I don't think that Braden Willis is that guy. He's more of a move guy, H-back type. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's going to be a lot of Kittle and uh, Charlie but Warner. Can I ask a question? In game in Pittsburgh. Why, why, why don't they ever try, because like Chris Cooley did it, Bruce Miller right. did it. Why don't they ever try putting check in a lot of those situations? Not that he would be tight end too, but like you're paying the guy $8 million this year. Like, I, I don't know. I Why can't he be used similarly or, you know, augmented as like a tight end too? He does. He does. You'll see him uh, start out in the backfield quite a bit, go in motion, and he'll either end up, uh, you know, in the slot or at the end of the line of scrimmage. So they do use him to that degree. They don't use him as, you know, the you know two hundred and seventy five pound tight end like Toilolo was, just on the line, uh, acting as a you know as a third offensive tackle. He's just not. That's not what he can do, but um, they, they certainly will use use check more. They'll move him around more, um, and you know I, I think that's a, a a good story that hasn't been told yet. Is that use check and, and Christian McCaffrey have become really tight, and I don't know if either guy has had the opposite or you know that type of teammate in their careers, um, and so I think that's going to be fun to watch this year. Just how that that tailback fullback. Um, interplay works throughout the season. Yeah, no doubt. Braden Willis, I really like his prospects here, but we haven't talked about the quarterback in your great story about the rib game up in Seattle. Brock Purdy, the game he won over this coaching staff and his players, and he was voted as captain yesterday, one of the six captains for the 49ers. So they're all in on Brock Purdy. The players love him. I think the fan base is still undecided, undecided about whether or not they believe he's the franchise quarterback here, but all eyes on Brock Purdy to see what he does for Encore. What do you expect from him in 2023, Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't expect anything different than, than what I've seen, which is just um, efficiency. I mean, his his superpower, it's not his arm, it's not his size, and, um, you know, his ability to break tackles and whatnot. It's um, that his brain works faster than certainly than, than most rookies, any rookie I've ever covered. Um, and, um, you know, that was what caught, um, Kyle Shanahan's eye. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I, I asked both Shanahan and, uh, Brian Greasy about, you know, uh, rookies, uh, or, or Purdy's rookie season. And, uh, you know, Shanahan's most impressive game, the game that impressed Shanahan the most was the Miami game because, um, he came in cold and, uh, that, that offense didn't miss a beat. And it really gave Shanahan um, hope that, uh, or reassurance that, you know, this, this team can still go to the playoffs even without Jimmy Garoppolo as the quarterback. I think the game for Greasy was the Seattle game for sure. And um, that had to do with just the, the calm with which this 22 year old. Uh, seventh round pick on the road in Seattle with <laughs> with a division on the line. I mean, it was just one um, kind of layer of stress after another. Oh, he didn't practice at all. Oh, he's okay. injured. Oh, he can't throw it as well as he usually can. And he didn't let it phase him. And that was just incredible to, to Greasy. I mean, I think it told Greasy that this guy is special. Um, and, and what I wish I had kind of stressed a little bit more in the story is that I think Greasy is the, is the ideal quarterbacks coach for Purdy because Purdy has no experience mm-hmm. and it was really leaning on Greasy and Greasy's experience in that game. Um, you know, Greasy's experience 12 years in the league and right. him dealing with injuries and, uh, I just thought it was a really good, uh, relationship and it kind of came to, uh, the forefront uh, in Seattle that day. Matt Barrows, the athletic, go read his work, man. He does a great job covering the 49ers. I know you're going to have fun at Pittsburgh as the season is finally here. No more narratives, no more noise. Now we just get to football. And number 97 is here. I'm sure you'll talk to him today when he meets the media for the first time all season. Matt, thanks so much for the time as always, man. All right. Anytime, guys. Talk to you soon. Anytime. Matt Barrows here. On the road, so a nice little breakdown of this football game as well as a contract.